When Smash Ultimate claims to be the biggest crossover game in history, it definitely hits the mark. With a couple hundred different series represented in the game, it's definitely a world record holder. But obviously, they can't fit in everything. Smash development only goes on for so long, and with new games releasing every single day, both AAA and indie, it's incredibly easy for some to miss out on the chance to be in Smash. Spirits and Spirit Battles do help this out considerably, with plenty more series represented than is usually in Smash. But we can do better. Today, I'm showing off a bunch of custom spirit battles that I have not only come up with, but actually modded to be functional in the game. Look, there's the first one. It's a subscribe spirit. You better smash it on your webpage to defeat it and get it in your collection. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! The first spirit battle I made is one for Crash Bandicoot. This is a character that I am personally surprised has no presence in Super Smash Bros. I was really rooting for him as a character, but I'm really shocked that we didn't even get a Mii Fighter costume or spirit representing his series. So of course, I want to rectify that. Crash takes over Incineroar, specifically with the orange color scheme. And what else would this fighter do but prefer his neutral special? Incineroar's darkest lariat is a sort of cyclone attack, which is the perfect move to represent Crash's iconic spin attack. The trouble with a spirit battle like this though is that it really seems hard to find a balance between really really hard and really really easy. Having Incineroar only use its neutral special doesn't really make for a challenging fight. So in an attempt to remedy that, I also gave Incineroar increased physical and neutral special attack powers as well as super armor. And like I said, this fight can just go from really easy to really hard with just the minor tweaking of power and things like that. In my actual testing of the spirit battle, I only just barely won and that was because of some cheese. Otherwise, I just would have 100% lost. I guess another tweak I could have done is give Incineroar the rocket belt referencing Crash's jetpack, and maybe that would make this even harder because he wouldn't be able to get cheesed off of the platforms. As far as the stage goes, Congo Falls just felt like the best representation of Crash that Smash currently has. Loads of greenery, a giant river, and some wooden platforms, these are all just peak Crash Bandicoot in my opinion. I also tried to see if I can make apples spawn in a tidal wave, making reference to Wampa Fruit, but I don't really know that that's possible, since apples aren't technically a spawnable item, but are instead an item hazard only on the green green stage. It would have been really cool though. So that fight was just a little taste, just a straight up 1v1 referencing a character. Next I wanted to try to up the ante and do a little bit more. So I present the spirit battle for Fall Guys. The battle starts off with an army of Kirby fighters, who I felt were the best stand-ins for the generic Fall Guy meme. I know the game is all about customization and different colors and stuff like that, and if it was doable, I would have a bunch of Kirby spawn with different character hats to represent that, but unfortunately, I just don't think that's possible. So I went with the sort of default Fall Guy, which I also think works out pretty well. All of these Kirbys also prefer grabs and have increased throw power referencing the ability to grab onto an enemy during a minigame and potentially having them fall and get eliminated. You'll also notice that partway through the battle, Shovel Knight appears, which was a last minute addition when I remembered that Shovel Knight was featured as a costume in Fall Guys, so I just went ahead and threw him in ultimately as a real nod to the customization feature. After you've defeated 7 Kirby, a new challenge appears. Pink King K rule. I had him be pink in order to keep with the theme of the pink fall guy, but I chose him because he has a crown, and that's ultimately what you win in fall guys when you are the last man standing. He also prefers to throw his crown, giving you a funny chance to pick it up and use it against him, or emulating the fact that you are trying to win the crown. As for the stage, I felt like Super Happy Tree matches the color vibes of Fall Guys a bit. On top of that, the fruit on the stage works well for the different mini games that feature fruit. I probably should have picked Omega or Battlefield because I didn't realize until I got into the battle that I used the normal stage, and so this makes it a much, much longer battle. Ultimately though, I'm pretty happy with how this one turned out. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for. I really thought that Among Us was going to get a spirit in the later end of Ultimate's life. It was such a big phenomenon and it seemed to hit that sweet spot of just old enough that maybe it would end up in the game. But unfortunately, we never got it, so I'm here to right that wrong. So here is the crewmate. Naturally, this is represented by Olimar, who, just like the Among Us Beans, is a spaceman. For this fight, I thought I'd try to emulate an Among Us lobby. There's the player and three Olimar fighters, and these represent the normal good crewmates just trying to do their silly little tasks. But then we have two enemy team Alphs, who are doing their best to blend in with the Olimar, but we know the truth. They're the imposters. So this fight doesn't actually have you defeating the fighters. All you need to do is survive for 60 seconds. 
This is supposed to emulate completing your tasks and not giving the imposters enough time to actively kill every crewmate. Honestly, this is just the best that I could come up with, and I do feel like it's a fairly decent way to act out an Among Us fight in Smash. And I broke it. The other ALF would never spawn in, so you would just end up sitting there for the rest of the match. So I had to fix it, which in this case was removing one of the teammate Olimar and throwing in an ALF that didn't come in on a respawn, and that fixed it right up. I also had the fight take place on Mario Galaxy, which is on a planet in space, which is similar to Polis, a map in Among Us that takes place on the surface of the planet Polis. And honestly, I'm pretty happy with the crewmate spirit battle. But what is a crewmate without its imposters? So I went ahead and made a spirit battle for the imposters as well. Just give them a two for one. This time the battle is reversed and you play as the imposter with an elf at your side. This elf is using the Olimar color scheme to further indicate that he's trying to blend in with the other Olimar. The other four fighters are all of the Olimar skins and you have to defeat them all in order to win the battle. These Olimar will all avoid conflict, kind of like the crewmates, and that also makes it all the more difficult to defeat them in the 60 second time limit. I thought it would be fun to have Alf spawn with the Death Scythe, indicating he's here to kill everyone, and shooting items also spawn just to keep with the theme. As for the stage, I chose Frigate Orpheon because it makes the fight take place on a spaceship, similar to the Among Us map Skell. Keeping all hazards on even makes the alarms blare when the stage flips upside down, similar to the alarms that play when a sabotage has been activated by the imposters. And I was surprised at how difficult this fight was. I lost multiple times while trying to record footage for this, although that may be because I'm just really bad with Olimar. And for our next spirit, we have... Sans! It's honestly a little surprising that we didn't get an official Sans spirit considering we got him as a me costume. It really felt like it should have been another Cuphead sort of situation, where we got both the costume and, later on, spirit. So naturally, this battle takes place against a Sans Me Gunner. I've tried to make this battle similar to the fight against Sans in Undertale, making it a pretty difficult fight overall. The CPU's attack and defense is pretty high, and on top of that, he not only quickly gets his final smash, but he gets a double final smash. And what's more, I've given the fight two different types of event flags. The first grants Sans invincibility at the very beginning of the fight, which was the best way I could think to emulate your attacks in Undertale always missing. After a bit, Sans will also fall asleep, which is based on the end of the fight where he literally falls asleep. I think there's a chance I might have made this fight just a little too hard. To try to help with that, Maximum Tomatoes can spawn to help you heal up a bit, which is not only helpful in the fight, but is also a sort of callback to healing in Undertale. Naturally, the stage for this fight is PictoChat 2 Omega, which has the same sort of vibes as the battle screens in Undertale, and also doubles as the stage that Sans was first revealed on during the Sakurai Presents stream. And yeah, Megalovania plays, but I didn't really think I needed to explain that one. Okay, so now to get totally out of my element, Freddy Fazbear. I never really played this series. I think it just didn't interest me, and maybe I was just too old when it came out. I don't know, I just, I never really played it. But I always thought Freddy Fazbear could have been a great me costume, or at the very least, a spirit. So for this, Freddy takes over a Banjo and Kazooie, naturally because Banjo and Freddy are both bears. I've increased the power of physical attacks and fist and foot attacks just to increase the difficulty a bit. And as far as the battle parameters, I made it so the battle turns dark after a short time. This is both to reference spending the nights at the restaurant, but also meant to be kind of like the jump scares that happen during the game. But for some reason, the game didn't really like that, and both on the pre-battle screen and during the battle, the event flag just displays no text. I'm not fully sure why, but the game actually does what it's supposed to, so I guess no harm done. As far as the stage goes, I thought Gamer hit the spooky vibes of Five Nights at Freddy's pretty well, even without the darkness element, so this is where it takes place. And while I was trying to figure out the Freddy fight, I figured out another fight that I could do as well. Golden Freddy. This spirit is mostly just a modified Freddy fight, with some things here or there to make it more appropriate for Golden Freddy. First is, of course, that Banjo is now a Golden Fighter, making him quite a bit stronger, obviously based on the gold of Golden Freddy. Along with that, because Golden Freddy is like some ghost or specter thing, I'm not entirely sure, he will also occasionally turn invisible during the fight, which I thought was a nice little addition. And instead of being on Gamer, this fight is instead on Luigi's Mansion, which is just to emphasize the spookiness of the theme a little bit further. And this is definitely the hardest fight that I made. I mean, this golden banjo killed me with up air in one of the battles. That's like Banjo's weakest move. However, for both of these last two fights, I am way outside my comfort zone, like I said. So if any of you FNAF fans out there have any recommendations for this, I am all ears. 
And the final spirit battle that I made is well inside my scope of expertise this time, a battle against Fortnite Jonesy. Again, Fortnite is a game that I am shocked never got represented in Smash. Nintendo and Epic Games have had such a close relationship the last few years that it seemed like a no-brainer to give them something in Smash. But alas, here I am fixing that grave mistake. So here we go, a Jonesy spirit battle. The first thing that's obvious is to make the fighter Snake. Fortnite has a ton of different weapons, but Snake is really the only character that uses weaponry close to the majority of weapons that Fortnite offers at any given time. So as a result, Snake has increased shooting item power, as well as increased fire and explosive power. To make the fight more like Fortnite, I've also applied a critical health healing ability, which will heal Snake 50% when he takes over 100% damage. This is supposed to simulate the various healing items in Fortnite usually popping a couple of small potions to heal up in the middle of a tense fight. It's also why I specifically made the spirit a shield fighter, both because of the shield potion, but also because in build battles you pretty typically shield yourself in a structure in order to protect yourself. And of course, the stage this fight is on is Moray Towers, because of its similarity to the Tilted Towers. Or maybe it's because I now link the two in my head because there's a mod that does just that. And that's everything I came up with. But of course, there is a ton of room for creativity with brand new custom spirits, so I would love to know any ideas that you guys have down in the comments below. Let's try to keep it to game characters, but if you have cool ideas, I would love to read about them, and maybe they will show up in a potential part two. Thanks guys for watching, I will see you next time, peace out, and please remember to be good to one another.